Hey guys, this is Austin. So say you're going to be doing a budget gaming PC build. What CPU should you go for? For the last year, the AMD Athlon series has been the best way to go for a lot of gaming builds, and with the new Athlon 860K, it's now sporting AMD's updated Steamroller CPU cores. On the other hand, Intel recently released the Pentium G2358, better known as the Anniversary Edition, with an unlocked core to allow for some serious overclocking. On the other hand, the Athlon 860K sports 4 cores and a higher 3.7GHz clock speed, but it's also $20 more expensive. While the Pentium is a dual core processor at 3.2GHz, it's also based on the same Haswell architecture as the higher end Core i5s and i7s. On paper, it doesn't look like much of a fight, as the Athlon is sporting two more cores and is clocked 500MHz higher, however the specs don't tell the entire story in this case. While the Athlon series has been shipping with unlocked processors for a while now that work with even cheaper motherboards like the excellent MSI A78M E35, Intel has typically kept overclocking limited to their higher end processors and motherboards. With the Pentium anniversary though, a few companies like ASUS have enabled overclocking on their more budget offerings like the B85M G2.0. You will need to update the BIOS out of the box, but after you do, you'll be able to dive into the settings and change things like clock speed and voltage. Both CPUs are decent out of the box, however to really get the most out of them, you really do need to overclock. I did all my testing with a Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO, easily one of my favorite CPU coolers. With it, I was able to bump the 860K to 4.4GHz and the Pentium Anniversary to a massive 4.7GHz. Price wise, when you put the 212 EVO along with the CPUs and motherboards, you're going to be looking at $185 regardless if you go for the Pentium or the Athlon. To make sure the CPUs aren't being bottlenecked by the graphics card, I tested with an ASUS Radeon R9 285, a solid mid-range card. The first test is Cinebench, which is a good starting point to get an idea of the actual performance of each CPU. For single threaded performance, the Haswell cores inside the Pentium are a massive help as it easily outpaces the Athlon even without overclocking. Use all of the cores though and things get a lot more even. A lot of us also work with video, whether it's for streaming or editing. I took a 10 minute 4K video and ran it through Handbrake to bring it down to 1080p. Here, the four cores of the Athlon have a chance to shine, falling behind the Pentium at stock but essentially tying when overclocked. The 3 d Mark Firestrike test is a good way of seeing how well each CPU can handle some intense gaming. As Firestrike tends to be heavily graphics bound for the most part, you won't see a huge difference here but the Pentium does pull out a small but noticeable lead. Bioshock Infinite was one of my favorite games of 2013 with excellent graphics even on lower end hardware. Run it at 1080p on Ultra, and again Intel pulls out the win, this time with even the stock Pentium beating the overclocked Athlon. When it comes to PC racing games, Grid has always been one of the best, and Grid Autosport doesn't disappoint. This is a game that really likes a fast CPU, and it shows here, as the Pentium is significantly faster, clearing a cool 40% performance increase when overclocked. Metro Last Light did a terrific job of delivering a great stealth first person shooting experience, and the new Redux version takes it up a notch. Metro really likes a powerful quad-core processor and it shows, as the Athlon nearly catches up its stock despite its major single thread disadvantage. Overclock things however, and the Pentium is still able to pull out the win. The Athlon is still a great CPU, but this new Pentium Anniversary Edition is an absolute monster. So what do you guys think? Would you use the Pentium in your next build? Let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I've got to give a big shout out to LittleBits for making this video possible. LittleBits is an easy and fun way of making your own electronic creations. Whether you just want to learn how electronics work, or want to build something cool like a doorbell that texts you, you can do it with little bits. It's crazy easy to get started with. There's no need to solder or code, as everything is magnetic. You'll find modules ranging from basics like an LED, all the way to a mini computer running Linux that can work on Wi-Fi. Or you could, you know, create a real masterpiece. If you want to attempt to match my immense creation, head over to littlebits.com where you'll get $20 off your first kit with the promo code AUSTIN and that also includes free shipping in the US. Again, that's littlebits.com and promo code AUSTIN to get yourself $20 off, so definitely go check it out and help support the channel. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.